Hey there and welcome back to another Disney video. And today, I'm going to be winding back the clock to talk about a film that's well and truly fallen through the cracks of the world's collective pop culture consciousness, despite coming out during one of the most prestigious and exciting times in the history of animation, the Disney Renaissance. And of course, as you'll know from the title, that film is The Rescuers Down Under. And today, since there's a high likelihood of you having no idea what that film is or what it's about, I'm going to walk you through the ins and outs of this thing, and then talk about my own thoughts. And spoiler alert, I don't like this movie. And it's an irrational thing, because you know, the film itself is actually quite good. And so yeah, without further ado, let's get into this thing, eh? Released in 1990, The Rescuers Down Under was hot on the heels of The Little Mermaid, which is where we start the Disney Renaissance, whilst also serving as a follow-up to the 1977 classic, The Rescuers. Back in the day, the original rescuers, which followed the mice Bernard and Miss Bianca as they searched to rescue an orphan from the clutches of Madame Medusa, deep in the bayou of southern United States, was hailed as a return to greatness for Walt Disney. They'd been slumping since the 60s, but now they were back. Only to immediately fade away again until we hit The Little Mermaid at the end of the 80s, and then the 90s becomes the decade of Disney. And so you'd assume that it would be a good idea to go back to the well, so to speak. After all, if the first one was heralded as a gateway to a new golden era for the studio, surely a sequel would be able to keep the momentum of this burgeoning renaissance going, right? It wasn't a bad idea, and whilst I used to wonder how this film had ever been greenlit in the first place, with this added context, it really does become a bit of a no-brainer. I mean, the original was a tremendous financial and critical success, so why wouldn't they make another one? It just makes a lot of financial sense. And so the film was made, and this time chronicled the adventures of Bernard and Miss Bianca in the land down under, in the wild deserts of northern Australia. But that's just a brief blurb. What actually happens in this thing? At the beginning of the film, a young boy named Cody befriends a golden eagle named Marahute, a giant golden eagle that doesn't feel or sound very Australian, but okay. And it shows him its nest and its eggs, and pretty much adopts him as her brand new chick. Taking one of her feathers with him, Cody returns home, only to run into the dangerous poacher, Percival C. McLeach. Realising that the feather means that the kid knows where the big game is, he fakes Cody getting eaten by crocodiles and takes him hostage. However, this is witnessed by a mouse, who in turn gets word to New York City that a child's in danger and needs rescuing, prompting our heroes to be sent out just as Bernard's trying to propose. The particulars don't really matter that much, but long story short, they head out into the wild and they endeavour to try and save the boy and prevent the eagle biting the dust, and they succeed, and the kid survives, and the eagle survives, and like many Disney films, our villain dies horribly when he's washed over the edge of a waterfall. And then our hero Bernard finally gets the chance to propose to his girlfriend Miss Bianca. And it's all's well that ends well. The day is saved, and our wholesome adventure comes full circle. And for the most part, this film it did okay for itself, sort of. It has a 71% on Rotten Tomatoes, at least from a critical point of view, with an audience score of 68%. You know, probably not the highs the studio were hoping for here, but it's not a terrible disgrace either. And then commercially, uh, well, I haven't been able to find a budget anywhere, but the film grossed $47 million or thereabouts, which I don't think was ideal for them. I'm pretty certain they would have wanted more. I mean, it's bookended by Little Mermaid with a budget of $40 million, and Beauty and the Beast with a $25 million budget both of which grossed over $200 million, with Beauty getting over $400 million. So, oof, this film well and truly underperformed. And who really knows why? Perhaps it's not what audiences were looking for anymore. I mean, the musical was back, and it was big. And this film still has that lingering, dated feel you get when you watch Disney from the 70s and 80s. The story is kind of bland and forgettable, and the characters are shallow and underdeveloped. And you compare that to the colourful characters and storylines of the Renaissance films, and it's clear to see why this didn't track too well. And even more clear why it's been well and truly forgotten by many. And I mean forgotten. I mean, never has a film been so utterly eclipsed by every other film in its era by the same company. Ugh. Seriously, how many people even know this thing exists? Even Disney just seemed to quietly shuffle it off to the side when the Renaissance gets brought up. Which to me is actually quite funny. I also think it probably didn't help that this film was released the exact same day as the first Home Alone film, which would gross $400 million. So, yeah, I guess we can see why this thing did not make a box office splash. Outmoded and outdated story and characters, and tough competition at the box office. And that was all she wrote. But that doesn't mean that the film's completely devoid of any charm at all. It does actually look really good, and there are a number of really exciting sequences. There's one near the start of the film where Cody gets picked up by a giant golden eagle and they soar through the skies. And it really is remarkable. And it ultimately does look like a massive step up in terms of visual quality. 
and in fact a quick trip to the wiki suggests that this is indeed the case. This was the first Walt Disney animated film to be completely digitally animated, so there's that I guess. And honestly when I look at the film, and when I watch it, and I see how it did financially, and then I see how it's faded into extreme obscurity, at least by Disney standards, I can't help but feel a sense of grim satisfaction. Because I hate this stupid film, I'm sorry if you like it, but tough luck. To me, it's garbage. And there's one simple reason. This shit markets itself as down under, you know, in Australia. But despite the animation team apparently flying to Northern Territory in Australia to get inspiration, the film is the least Australian thing I've seen. It was clearly trying to cash in on the Crocodile Dundee vibe, Ozploitation, you know, all of that sort of stuff. But it missed the mark entirely. And at times, it kind of feels like it's meant to be set in America. And then they decided halfway through production that they wanted a different gimmick for the story. I mean, all the voices are American accents for the most part. They don't even try. At least the key characters are. Like, at least films like Finding Nemo bothered to have some Australian accents in the cast, even though realistically, Marlin and Nemo would have had accents too, as they're from Queensland, but that's okay. Here, even the kid needs to be American. It's not like they got some big name child actor. He doesn't even have a Wikipedia. And then the main animal friend of the kid, the Golden Eagle. Golden Eagle? That animal doesn't live in Australia. That's a Northern Hemisphere bird. They couldn't have cracked a book and realized the eagle they should be using is a wedge-tailed eagle. Ugh. Maybe I should just be glad they didn't use a goddamn bald eagle. Ugh. Yeah, normally this kind of stuff doesn't bother me. But damn it, you're going to try and cash in on Australia? You're going to use the name? At least try a bit harder. Oh, but yeah, I digress. That's why it gives me a good giggle when I see that this thing flopped and probably didn't even make up most of its budget. Maybe that's harsh of me, but I don't really care. And so with all that being said, that's the end of the video. And I would like to remind you that these are just my opinions and I'd like to hear yours. What do you think of The Rescuers Down Under if you've seen it? You like it? Hate it? I'm curious for your thoughts, so make sure to like, comment, subscribe and let me know.